Jason Daniels. Daniels with a sweeping hand pass to Ralph Smith. He'll have to go back to the centre to Devonport. Devonport can go to Burke. Oh, he's trying to beat too many players, but he gets away with it. Back to Sean Ralph Smith. He should be kicking. Oh, he ran a long way. Touches it on the ground just in time. Brings it to the puck, and he's found Newport. And Newport should get this ball moving very quickly to Lockett. Now he is. The high floating kick. Oh, Lockett a chance to use his strength. There he is. Oh, he's too good. Too strong. That was a perfect kick then by Newport. Well, Tony Lockett, this is a vital kick. It will be a real handy one into the strong breeze if you can kick this through. They're only uh, 14 points down, St Kilda. So really, they've done fairly well when you consider it. Yeah, particularly if Lockett kicks this from directly in front. Big Tony Lockett kicks hard at the ball. And he goes. He's surrounded. Gee, he's got a great capacity to shrug the tackle. Magnificent kick. Oh, Daniels has dropped it. Cleverly taps it on with Footscray harassing. Here's Fletcher. Now McAdam. Now Newport. They're wanting the handball. They've got the loose man now. They should be looking for Lockett. Devonport on the left foot. Lockett. Oh, great mark, Tony Lockett. Even so, he'd be pretty nervous as he comes in to kick. Big hands round that ball. From directly in front, Tony Lockett. He kicks, and he's gone. So Lockett has kicked two. Maybe that'll lift the Saints. A badly needed goal. St Kilda 2-2 two -two to Footscray 6-3. Well, he actually did a brilliant job because Ralph Smith banged it down in a hurry a moment ago. Low against Wine again, taken by McAdam. McAdam quickly. Now Lockett's one out with a chance. Well done, big five, free kick. Hanging on. He's strong, isn't he, Tim? Yes, he's a mountain of a man. And one out, I would back him against any player in the AFL. Well, you just can't imagine anyone to beat him one on one, could you? And it was a mark. <laughs> well, you're, it's in a difficult situation where he's put his body between you and the ball. And there's no way known that you're going to move him or get around him to try and knock the ball away. The immovable object he is. And uh, what a great player. Going for goal number 131. But more importantly than that, the third goal today. And the quick kick to, to where he was one out. That's what I was trying to say, Bruce, to get it to him quickly. From the goal square, square virtually. That's where Campbell's standing on the edge. Lockett bends down, drop punt, leans back, hooks it, but kicks a goal. That was McDwyer, though, in, intercepting Liberatore. Now Dale kick it. They need two or three goals into the breeze, the Saints. Here's Winmar playing a magnificent turn. The booming kick to the half forward line. And a good no mark, in fact. Here's big Tony Lockett. Lockett kicks. Devonport races back with the flight. Let's see what he can do with it. Devonport chips in a goal. He's in his rightful position. He puts it through. Still a long way back, isn't it? At 4-3 to 10-5 on a day where goals are difficult. Campbell attacks by going straight down the centre to Coleman. A good thump away from Grant. Harvey can go for goal. Drop punt, size it, kicks it. Well, the Saints are alive. Bar called play on Tim Pekin trying to pick it up. He's looking for the hand pass. It's a good one, too. He's found Mick Dwyer. They're looking to create a loose man. There's no one leading for him. In towards half forward, Stewie Lowe in front of the pack. Couldn't mark. Here's McAdam. Oh, great play, McAdam. The dangerous Devonport. He could have a shot for goal from 50 metres. He bombs it in. Saints won't lie down. They're moving on to 6-3. A chance for Shanahan to break the tackle. Gives it to Harvey. Harvey to McAdam. On to Greg. And away they go to the Saints. To Burke. Neat drop punt to kick it at centre half forward. He's got to get the ball on quickly. Lockett calling for it again short. Morris has made some ground. Morgan stops and props on him though cleverly. Morris short to centre half forward finds Vitovic. That's a good play there by Morris. With Grant and Liberatore leading the way. And Vitovic to go for goal from centre-half forward. The drop punt. 
and he scored. A little bit of consolation with the Saints at goal for Vitovic. They'll probably try and make their scoreboard a lot more respectable. There's Bowie, he was grabbed when he didn't have it. Now McDwyer from 60 metres in the locket. Locket at the back. Marks and goals. In the centre square. Goes with a long one. Low is the target. Big fly by Stewie at the back. Didn't quite get to the fall of it. Backs to Slick Handball. Put Mansford under pressure. Bowie goes for a long one. Lock at the target. Lock it and Campbell. A wrestling match. It bounces for a goal. Three goals in two minutes. To McAdam at centre wing. Again, long and quickly. Low at the back this time. Reynolds in the front spot. Missed by Bowie. Stanfield. Just worried out of it in the end. Tui was in there hard. Burke goes in after it. Loose ball. Stanford over the top. And Footscray holding it. Well, that's that's dead right. So Stanfield and Tui were basically wrestling one another. Bit of it kicks his second. Morris went for the torpedo. But nine times out of ten in modern day football, they don't get onto them. That was Fletcher getting it to Harvey in towards Low, and Low takes his second mark of the game. Stuart Low. Now let's hope he kicks a little bit better than his last shot. Lock it on the lead. And he goes back. Stewie Low kicks it goal, and I think he's finally kicked that one. He has for a goal. As we see, Mick Dwyer to the half one line. Low again. Now he's too far out this time, he should get it down to Lockett quickly. Stewie Lowe should be moving it now. Lockett goes back to the square. Here he is, Lockett versus Campbell. Lockett and it bounces. I think it's a goal. Yes. 12-6-18-5. Atkins in the centre square. It's the sort of thing we expected to happen, that uh, the Saints would get some goals when the, the sting had gone out. Atkins would be pretty happy with his day. 12 and 13. Vitovic. Missed by Dwyer. Bowie to Greg. Back to centre half forward. Oh, missed by Fletcher. Not easy. Hawkins. Had to get rid of it in a hurry in the end. McAdam. Harvey to Fletcher. Lowe, who's playing very uh, much as a twin full forward late in the game. Kick it. Oh, high tackle for him. Thought always is to try and break that first tackle. Drop punt, another one. So the Saints keep coming home with them. Colin Look again gets it to Wallace to the half forward line. Morris, clever hand pass to Greg. Greg's who's made a big difference in the center of the ground. Goes for the long kick. Oh, a strong clash. Here's Craig Devonport from 50 meters and Devonport. To Atkins, to Tui, to Frost, and that's it. Footscray is in to the preliminary final. Big lesson for everybody. Because Footscray absolutely annihilated us, showed us how to play finals football. They really were focused on, on the ball. And I think that's where the benefits of next season can really come to the fore, in that I don't think our players were as, as much disappointed at the result as frustrated at the result. A bit similar if you like, to the Essendon game earlier in the season at the MCG. We'd been there, done that, we knew what was going to happen, but we fell short of the mark, and the only people to blame are ourselves. So we all copped it on the chin, had a good soul search about it, and have made a lot of plans and amendments carrying out a lot of fine-tuning internally, 
cosmetically, etc., etc., and really looking forward to 1993. I think I'd simply put it like this, that three years ago, at the end of the home and away season, we played a lot of kids, <clears throat> full knowing that we wouldn't be a part of that year's final series. Last year, when we come into prior to the Geelong game, we were testing a few players. This year, again, testing a few players. But along the way, we've trialled players such as Peter Everett, Justin Peckett, John Giorgio, and others, just to name a few. They're young, young fellows that have pace and good football qualities about them and are good characters, good, good people. So I think that's where we've made our improvement. We're now judging top four players, if I can say that, no, no. We're now judging top three players. If I can explain that, it's a lot easier to give a kid or a player a game of football in a side when you're 10th on the ladder. And everybody makes a hero of him and says he's a good player, but really he's got a lot of shortfalls. If that player can be given the same opportunity in a top three side, and still come out the hero, then I think you've found a player. I think that's where St Kilda's at at the moment. Now, where we need, or what we need to do to improve next year, is I simply believe, improve on what we have. Again, through the same philosophies which were undertaken earlier this year. Again, improve the kicking abilities and disposal abilities of our one-ball contingent. If we can achieve that by the same percentage again this year, well then, we may go one spot higher on the ladder. We may go three spots higher on the ladder. But we won't go five spots lower. If we can improve the application of our players for the, the entire length of the season, we may not have a lapse as we did against Essendon in the season. So therefore, when we're sitting round 22 next year watching the TV, if we've got the buy, instead of being on 14 wins, we may be on 17 wins. And then have a double chance. All hypothetical. But that's what we've got to aim at.